This is the fourth trial of this calendar year on the subject of study committee B2, and this has been made possible with the continuous guidance from Sri Anish Anand, Signal National Study Committee B2, and Assistant Director Power Gate. We welcome and convey our sincere thanks to Sri Anish Anand for his continuous support to Sri India. We are honored to have with us today eminent and distinguished expert on the subject, Dr. Constantine, former chairman, Sigre SC on overhead lines and recipient of Sigre Medal 2020, who shall be sharing his in-depth experience on the subject today. I welcome you, Dr. Constantine, and I am happy, uh, I am thankful to you for sparing your valuable time for this program. We have with us the eminent professional speaker for two days program. Mr. Dinesh Arora, Director, Epsilon Asia Group, Mr. Chandrakant, Chief Manager, Yang, Power and Corporation, and Mr. M. N. Ravindran Narayan, Managing Director, Taurus Power, Taurus Private Limited. We are grateful to all the experts for their valuable time for this program and helping CBIP and CBI India in achieving its objective of dissemination of knowledge amongst professionals and stakeholders. Ladies and gentlemen, this program has been joined by about uh, 60 participants from various organizations. I welcome all the participants who have joined us today and would urge them to take maximum advantage of this unique opportunity to listen and interact with such distinguished experts. At the end, I convey my thanks to Messrs. Aditya Villa and Senator for their excellent support as platinum sponsor of this event. With this, I conclude and wish a for tutorial ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for your address and brief background about the tutorial. Now, I'm honored to invite Dr. Constantine for keynote address. Uh, before he start, I just want to give a brief introduction of Ms. Uh, Dr. Constantine to the participants. He was a uh, former chairman of SIGRE Study Committee on Overhead Lines. Professor Constantine uh, received his doctorate degree from Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, Zurich, and his postdoctoral uh, qualification as lecturer from the Technical Un University of Drenthen until his retirement at the age of uh, at the end of uh, 2011. He was uh, the CEO of the Fischer Group from 2010 to 2016. He was the chairman of the SIGRE study committee on overhead lines and has uh, many years been teaching overhead lines courses at Stuttgart University and TU Drenthen. He has authored more than 100 papers and four reference books and is a SIGRE fellow and the recipient of the SIGRE medal 2020. So I welcome you, sir, and I now request you to kindly uh, start with the keynote address. Over to you, Constantine. Thank you very much. Very kind. I should have asked my wife to join so you can hear all the good things you thought about me. Half of it is maybe true. So anyway, so now comes the most difficult part. I'm very happy to be with you today, ladies and gentlemen. And now comes the most difficult part to start the presentation. I'll do my best. Let me share my screen with you. Wow. So this is my theme today. Overhead line issue related to the facts, at least from my point of view. But before before I start, let me tell you, I'm not sure that everybody has realized it. 2021 is a great year, not only because we have got the vaccine and soon we'll be able to see each other again. Uh, actually, I got my, I'm, I'm getting this vaccine in Switzerland where I live uh, next week. But the 2021 is a great year because it's a great year of many anniversaries. I'm not sure that everybody knows it. Actually, starting on a personal point of view, I have an anniversary or half an anniversary. I'll become in July 75 years old, which is in this pandemic period a good achievement. And I wish it to everybody and all to the much younger people. 
Secondly, and much most importantly, my wife has an anniversary. She is becoming pam pam five years old. The exact figure is a well kept family secret. Thirdly, and even more important, Sigre has a great anniversary. Sigre, our organization is becoming 100 years old. Sigre was founded in Paris in 1921 and has gone a long way to become the leading organization of the world on electrical networks. And I hope that uh, some of you, I'll try my best, will be in Paris in, and at the end of August to celebrate, I hope physically, not only on, on, on the screen, this great, um, this great uh, event. But also, and I'm sure you know that, CBIP Sigre India is, uh, I understand, having this year an anniversary because I, 1921, 1991, it was a Sigre India was, uh, was uh, founded as a national committee. So it's a 30 years anniversary, which is not bad. And my relationship with uh, Sigre India and CBIP has also an anniversary, 10 years. 2011, I had my first uh, meeting in CBIP in India with Sigre people. Um, then it was uh, Mr. Kanjlia and P.P. Vahi and all the people who are still there, Batra and Vishan, Dut and uh, all my friends. And I, um, I, can, I, I have to tell you, the, the success story of Sigre India over the last years, it is, in my view, astonishing, unpredictable and remarkable. I mean, from very, very low membership numbers and very few events, Sigre India has developed to a major national committee of Sigre, all compared to the best and the biggest ones all over the world, has, uh, I don't know, almost 1,000 members, I think, makes uh, regularly tutorials. I mean, I, 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 am, uh, I have a good view of what happens in Sigre, and I have to, to congratulate all the officials of Sigre India for their activities, like this tutorial today. There are no other, very few, if any, organizations within Sigre who are so active. And this is, uh, this is, um, this is fantastic. So this closes more or less um, the anniversary event. Ah, one I forgot. In Greece, where I originally come from, we celebrate this year 200 years of liberation, of revolution against the Ottoman Empire. Greece um, was for 400 years under um, uh, occupation and 200 years back, so our grand grandfathers uh, to be became free to the freedom in their hands. And I am writing a book on that. Besides my technical books, you'll hear about them at the end of my presentation. I'm writing a book about all the people also from India who came to help the Greeks to become free. Enough about this. Over here, this is the facts. Uh, I think all of you who are interested and are here are very lucky because uh, overhead lines are going to be a big issue and a big business for the next, as long as we live. You live much longer than I will, but it's going to be this effect. For many, many years, overhead lines will be the backbone of the network. The reason being that we have to decarbonize this planet. We have only one planet in our disposal and we are doing it at the moment the maximum we can do to pollute it. So we have to decarbonize it. And to decarbonize it, there's only one way, is to electrify everything. We have now electrification for many purposes, but 25% only of our energy is electrical. We have a big amount of energy which is uh, on fossil, like uh, transportation, and also heating. So in the next decades, all of it will turn electrical. And in order to do this, irrespective of whether we'll have all renewable in the sense we use today, or we'll, we'll come back to nuclear fusion or other means of getting electrical energy, the transportation of energy will happen by wire. 95%, I dare to say, overhead. A smaller amount, but still a good one, still increasing underground. 
So overhead lines is a big issue to, to deal with, and I'm sure a lot of innovations and interesting things are going to, to arise. One of the main components of an overhead line are insulators. And actually also here I have an anniversary. I am now 45 years dealing with overhead lines and insulators. And um, I have seen all the history of insulators in these years. Overhead line insulators are, are, uh, are cheap actually, too cheap in my view. Be, uh, despite the, 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 the major role they play in the reliability uh, of a transmission line. If an insulator fails, the line goes. And there's nothing, that, that's a nightmare for every transmission line engineer. It's like a jumbo coming down from, from the air and a lot of people getting killed. So nobody wants an overhead line failure. So insulators are extremely important for the safety and reliability of a line. And it is uh, for this fact that utilities are looking very carefully on the insulators. And this is also what I'm going to try to tell you, to talk to you, to you about a little bit about the reliability of insulators. But let me start, because time is running. Let me start. The first HV overhead line has also an anniversary. It is 130 years old. On the left, you can see the the first line, and I have put HV in quotes because high voltage these days was 15 kilovolt. And it was a long transmission from the southern part of Germany near Stuttgart, where uh, I spent many years of my life at Fisterer, to Frankfurt in the center of Germany, more or less. These are almost 200 kilometers. And this was done by on wooden poles with these small insulators and copper wires, four, mill four millimeter copper wires, enormous losses. But this was uh, still, they could manage to transmit 50 kV. These are the people um, who, who were um, responsible. Uh, some of them, maybe you have heard, you have heard of the company BBC, now ABB. This is uh, Brown and Boveri, the two founders on BBC. And this year's Oscar von Miller, a, a famous German engineer, who has founded the German Museum in Munich, very worth visiting when you are, you are next time you can travel and visit, um, and visit Munich and Germany. From low voltage 15, 25 kV, 1891, the system voltage developed enormously, as you can see here in this curve. So now we have in India, even if it's not in this, um, in this um, figure, 12, 1200 kV. Um, I'm not sure whether they, I think the first lines are already running in India 1200 kV. And the reason, of course, for the for the system voltage increase was to be able to transmit more power. Power demand has been growing. And together with this voltage, voltage um, increase, went together the development of the insulators. Because evidently, the higher the voltage, the more distance you need between the life and the earth parts of a line, let's say the conductor and the tower, and this is was bridged by an insulator. And here you see a little bit uh, the story, the insulator development over the years. In 1950, this was for, for, for telegraphs. It, it was the Siemens insulator. Then uh, around uh, when the transmission line started, we have uh, at, everything that was in porcelain these days. And then around uh, then in 1910, so the first real HV line, I think 110 kilovolt, and we have the first copper pin insulators, uh, which then around 1920 uh, became also from glass, with the same more or less the same principle, cap and pin. Then 1924, this is a Swiss development, this so-called so-called motor insulator, because people said, well, I have too much metal on my insulating distance. So maybe I'll try to do a longer insulating body. This is called the motor insulator. And this gave birth to the long run insulator, which now is a longer insulator with two metallic ends at both ends. And the next physical step at the end of the 1970s, 1960s, 1967, uh, the, the, the composite insulator has been developed which is built like a long road insulator, but instead of porcelain, we used a, a, a composite, a material uh, like silicon for, for the sets. 
So this is the year you see how things are developed. And a very nice example you see here, I was very lucky to go to my study committee on invitation of uh, Sigur India. We had a very nice meeting many years back and we went to be in a test station. And here you see this, this 1200 kV AC line. And you can also very nicely see, and very nicely, it's a small picture, but on the left, on the left side here, you have um, you have a string with of porcelain long rods. You can see they are many different. And on this side, you have a string of composites. So this is first um, differentiation. Composed insulators you can make as long as you like. Porcelain insulators, copper pin, of course, are only caps, but also long rods. You cannot make longer, let's say, than one meter. So you need, or maybe 150. So you need more more members of the string which is has um, uh, not serious, but has some issues. So I see you see a nice comparison and also composite tends to be a little shorter. So don't think that, that I am biased and guess composite. I can tell you already now that in my view, after 50 years in this business and many years in insulator business, in my view, all types of insulators, whether porcelain, glass or composite are of equal reliability if you get them in the right quality. Unfortunately, in our world, price is, uh, is a decisive factor. I tell to my students, I ask them what is the most important physical parameter, and they come with electrical gradient and mechanical stress and this and that, and I tell them, yes, these are important parameters, but at the end of the day, the price decides, which is unfortunate that I think it's time for a mind change because, for instance, insulators make only two to five percent of the total cost of a transmission line. So it is, it is, it is, uh, again, it's my personal view, but it does not make any sense to try to fight for a few, um, I don't know, euros or dollars or rupees to get uh, the price uh, down and then uh, sacrifice on quality. Because I can tell you, there's another another saying which says, and it is valid for all uh, things in life. You get what you pay for. Don't think you can get a very good item, let's say an insulator, for a very low price. There is always a drawback, which maybe you don't see. You know all of that. I just have put some some um, th three in the next three transparencies. I'll just present them to you the three type of insulators uh, without going into details because they are quite well known. On the left side, we have this cup and pin type. Here you have the long run type. But porcelain insulators have been around for I don't know for for more than hundred years now. So from the very beginning, actually hundred thirty years, we have porcelain insulators. They're extremely reliable. If 500 years in the future somebody, uh, maybe then they'll have they'll have discovered wireless transmission. If they they dig in the ground, dig I'm the sure ground. what they'll find they'll find comp they'll find part of porcelain insulators. They are extremely reliable. They have extremely good performance all over the world. They are well known. So this is this is this is a good insulator. Again, you should look at the quality. And for instance, for an example, long run insulators is more difficult to manufacture because of the long porcelain body. Not many manufacturers are really expert on this, so it's worth to look exactly the manufacturing process. Glass insulators came a little later, and they are more or less a copy of porcelain cup and pin using another insulating material, which is toughened glass. Again, here is the same issue. I mean, these are products with high technical requirements and difficult to manufacture. You cannot do them in the garage. So if you choose, that's why there are not very many glass insulator manufacturers reliable around. Eh? So they are excellent performance all over the world for all voltages, but again, Quality counts. If you choose a glass insulator, look for the best quality you can get. Compost insulators, it's it's another story. Compost insulators is the younger of these three 
insulating materials, and we call them composite because they consist of, of two different parts, I mean the insulating body. All insulators have some metal fittings, so they can we can attach the conductor and we can attach them on the supporting structure. But the insulating body has a glass fiber in, 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 in the middle, and then and then a sets from a from a from silicon. And I have sitting here on purpose silicon rubber compost insulators. We had when I started dealing with these insulators many, many years back, there was a big discussion, is silicon rubber the problem material or EPDM or Teflon? I think the market has decided, and I can tell you, you'll hear that also in the next transparency, the ultimate judge of a product, of uh, the success of a product, whatever product, is always the market. If the market accepts it, you know that this product is okay. So don't hear any suppliers telling you uh, stories. The market decides, only the market, nobody else. So combo insulators have now already a history of I don't know how many years, of uh, 50, 60 years, and to have a uh, good experience. Those of you who have been yesterday listening to my friend, Dr. Rob Steven on compact lines, she told you his view that the reliability of these insulators now that we are in the fourth generation is well proven from reliable suppliers. And there are some applications, by the way, that's why I have put this, this um, picture here. Some applications like compact, compact lines with so-called horizontal vis insulating uh, cross arms are only possible for high voltages, this is a 400 kV, by the way, for high voltage only with compost insulators because of their specific properties, which are, uh, they are flexible, they are quite flexible, so they can take better compression loads than the other materials which, which, are, which, are, um, which are brittle when they fail. They are elastic up to a high degree, and so these insulators are well suited for many applications like this or interface spaces, for example, practically today 99% of compact line applications are with composite insulators and also interface spaces. So uh, this is a, a little summary. I don't want to go into detail. This is not a presentation on insulators. So generally, it's some, some, some thoughts about insulators. One issue which is treated in your tutorial, what you are listening today, is the application of coatings on insulators. This is a very important, a very innovative application because we cannot, we have, we have millions of insulators on the line, which in some cases they have to, they have, they are not sufficient designed for, for polluted conditions. Maybe the polluted conditions on the site have changed. A factory, a cement factory, or whatever has been built. So, or substations. We have many substations which are most like almost exclusively with porcelain, with porcelain hollow core insulators for the various equipment. So, to apply their coatings, silicon based, of course, on silicon rubber. Why? Because of its unique hydrophobic properties. The water beats on the surface, and we have uh, the, the danger of flashover is, uh, is, is, is reduced or eliminated. So, in order, you cannot change all these insulators to composite. Impossible. And it's not, does not make sense. So, to apply coatings is an excellent idea. I find the solution very innovative and good. But I have to tell you the same story I told you already three times. Again, there, you should make sure, don't look only on the price. Look on the quality, look on the experience of the tests and choose the supplier who fulfills it. It is not so important if you pay a few dollars more for, 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 for a service, if you have then the better service for years to come. Remember, our overhead lines are designed to live maybe 60 years. We have lines now 100 years old and they're still around. And as I have said many times, the market has decided and this is this is the proof, uh, and I think the, the I have not the, the the actual figures, but the trend is the same. You see, the, by the way, the 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 market is 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 growing slowly but steadily because the electricity market is is always growing. Um, and in the last the composite market, which was when I started dealing with composites in the 1980s, maybe it was very small. This green uh, 
this green um, column, it was practically, I don't know, uh, one million dollars worldwide. And you can see now here how this is growing steadily. And you can see all three insulator types. We have, we have uh, porcelain, uh, I think uh, still uh, number one, maybe 50, 50 percent. We have something 30 percent composite and 20 percent glass, which is the proof all three insulator types. And maybe you have also a small a small column here on coatings, which is uh, not, not visible. But all types of insulation, I repeat, porcelain, glass, composite and coatings have proven their reliability and only on the condition that you choose the right supplier. And I can say that with a good feeling because I am not a supplier. I am retired in 10 years and I have, I should say, an objective view of the market. And if you want to hear some more or to learn some more on insulators and transmission lines and on electrical networks, there's come now the advertisement section of my presentation. Um, I have been involved um, in quite a few books. If you want to know a little about insulators, we have uh, with my friend Frank Smook a book on silicon compost insulators. We, we prepare now the second um, edition to be, to be available at, by the end of the year. I was the editor of the um, reference book, uh, so-called major reference work from Springer Publishers, the biggest publisher worldwide on technical literature, on overhead lines. This is a two volume book with almost uh, 1800 pages. And on print and appearing soon is um, the Springer Handbook of Power Systems, endorsed by Sigre, where again I am the editor. 40 Sigre colleagues um, uh, from academia, from industry, from all over the world have contributed, and there we treat the whole power system from A to Z from generation to to the to the customer. And again, this is a big book, 1400 pages. It's worth to have a look at it. Having said that, I am um, I have to thank again uh, CBIP and uh, Sigur India for the invitation. I always enjoy to be with you and I of course much more I enjoy to come to India with my wife. We love your country. You have a beautiful country. I wish to you all the best. Stay safe and as they say uh, stay positive and test negative. Uh, this is the new slogan of our days and I am looking forward to your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much sir, uh, for your address containing good information on the subject. Uh, so we will have questions at the end of our uh, next presentation. Uh, so with this, uh, now I I would like to invite Mr. Anish Anandji, who is the chairman of Sigre National Study Committee B2 and executive director from Power Grid Corporation of India Limited. Uh, before uh, he start, I would like to introduce him to the participants. He is an eminent uh, professor having more than 30 years of professional experience in the field of uh, power transmission. As chief general manager in Power Grid, he was heading engineering of all transmission lines projects of Power Grid as well as national and international consultancy assignments. Sri Anish Anandji has contributed uh, more than 40 technical papers as main or co-author for presentation in the national and international conferences, seminars organized by different agencies. He is currently uh, the executive director with Power Grid. So I welcome you, sir, and request you to kindly start with your presentation now. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, Dinkar ji, uh, my colleagues uh, in, in, from India, and a very good morning to Dr. Constantin. And I must say uh, it's been excellent presentation from you, sir. And uh, sorry I missed you uh, in the yesterday's uh, international tutorial, which we had uh, where Rob uh, was talking about the compact AC transmission lines. I received your mail also <laughs> in the morning and then of course I replied to that, but it would have been too early in the morning for you to see that probably. But I think uh, I consider myself lucky and uh, 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 
that you uh, you have been able to whether you you saw my mail or not you presented uh, about insulators and that is what i requested in my mail today morning to you uh, and i'm an old man i get very early up i saw your email Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. So, so my double regards to you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> compensating, compensating for missing you yesterday. Oh, it's okay. And uh, you know, we always, uh, we always very much like to hear uh, more and more from you. So that is why I requested that I informed you that I, I'm, I'm not going to give a formal presentation uh, today. So you can take my time also and make a presentation to us also besides your keynote address. So. Uh, uh, it's 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 really uh, kind of you that you have been able to accept our uh, request in that re respect and you know you have what you have uh, uh, informed and uh, to about insulators to all the participants i think uh, it would be a good learning experience to them and uh, uh, we you have always been our uh, old friend and uh, we consider you to be, uh, you know, Indian like, uh, like you, you, you have otherwise, you know, a lot of nationalities attached to you. But then, you know, from our own end, we consider you to be also our, you know, Indian uh, uh, colleague. I feel, I feel very Indian. Believe you me, I feel very. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, now coming to uh, coming to the subject of today's national tutorial. Uh, uh, I may say a few words about uh, the development which uh, uh, most of us in India have uh, witnessed over the last few years in respect of the growth of the transmission network. Uh, you know, uh, the installed generation capacity also presently we have uh, around 377 gigawatt uh, now, uh, 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 now in place and then we have uh, at the all India level uh, transmission lines of 220 kV and above voltage level of the order of around 435,000 circuit kilometers. So that has helped India over the last few years to you know establish that concept of one nation, one grid, one frequency, and also now one price. Okay. Uh, during the last 12th year plan, which uh, uh, which was there from 2012 to 2017. The growth which we had uh, uh, in India, uh, it, it was uncomparable to uh, you know uh, any other utility in the world. Uh, uh, we we had added around 110,000 circuit kilometers of transmission lines uh, during that period, and now in the 13th plan also, our progress has been very uh, remarkable. You know. In the three years time of the 13th plan from two, 2017 to 2022, we have uh, up till now added around 68,000 circuit kilometers of transmission lines. So th 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 this is uh, on the construction front where uh, and also on the technology front where, you know, one can see the transmission lines uh, uh, and the transmission network which has, uh, you know, grown from a network of 400 kV level voltage level earlier uh, to now 765 kV and 800 kV HVDC line and also 1200 kV AC lines also test lines which we have been uh, able to construct and charge. One of one of the major features of this development over the years is uh, this adoption of high voltage bulk power lines and which has in fact you know uh, reduced uh, the land usage requirement uh, Per se, with respect to the megawatt of power transfer, and there have been other also initiatives taken in this regard by Power Grid as well as other utilities in the country, like you know having multi-circuit transmission lines for you know loop in loop out of uh, various 4 and kV double circuit lines, which either when they pass through forest areas or when they terminate near the substations. So this has been a very uh, you know kind of good feature of the development in India that it has uh, been a kind of sustainable development uh, taking into also account uh, the environmental concerns. Uh, in the future also as uh, Dr. Constantin has uh, uh, has informed globally that uh, globally there there is going to be a never ending requirement of construction of new transmission lines and also besides uh, you know that uh, 
the existing large network which we have right now in India or or even in other countries also, the challenges are similar as to how to you know increase the performance or the capacity of the existing uh, overhead lines because it's it's very difficult to lay new lines because of the various constraints and the costs involved. So the focus these days is also largely on asset management with appropriate new technologies of the existing network and also to the extent possible, uh, you know, capacity addition and enhancing uh, the performance of the existing lines. Uh, like uh, as the network grow, the, you, you would have to adopt new technologies. Uh, uh, we have uh, in India and in Power Grid taken various initiatives um, uh, such as, you know, uh, adoption of aerial patrolling of the lines through helicopter. Of course, this was this is this is quite this was quite common in other countries, but then due to various restrictions with respect to uh, you know security uh, uh, requirements, uh, this was not possible here. But then this has been uh, this has been this is now being done uh, with the help of lidar and also the normal cameras. We are able to do aerial patrolling of the transmission lines and taking you know, measures wherever there is uh, an, some infringement or other deficiencies is noticed, uh, you know, during the OLM stage. The GPS based ground patrolling is also done these days. The, the, there is also use of drones and also condition monitoring is done using, uh, you know, thermogen cameras and corona scanners. Is this this pandemic uh, situation uh, uh, last year had uh, posed a lot of problems, but still uh, I can uh, like my Indian colleagues to some extent are aware of that, but then I may say that we have been able to do uh, despite these uh, pandemic constraints, a lot of uh, new additions in transmission network. Our third 800 kV HVDC line was commissioned during this period, and also there have been uh, you know, few disturbances uh, uh, because of the cyclonic incidents, and then we have been able to take measures <coughs> to rectify uh, and you know take disaster management uh, measures uh, in those cases in a very efficient way. Now, uh, uh, I understand this this uh, two-day conference uh, will be uh, really helpful uh, to the participants because. Uh, some of these new measures and technologies uh, uh, which uh, uh, on on which uh, you know they would hear from the experts uh, i think uh, some of these uh, recent uh, uh, in the recent past some enhance uh, this performance enhancement measures which we have taken uh, those are uh, like uh, Replacement of existing conventional insulators with composite insulators that was done in a big way uh, a few years back, and then that has really helped us minimize line trippings and improve line availability. Then there has also been operating of existing transmission lines to enhance capacity and power flow, uh, power flow uh, in, in those uh, lines using new technology HTLS conductors. There has also been few cases uh, where we faced problems in respect to uh, uh, operating performance of the lines due to due to excessive lightning uh, incidents in those areas. Uh, there have been improvements done by use of you know improved tower earthing systems as well as uh, use of lightning arresters and. Uh, of course, uh, you know, for the effective operation and maintenance of these lines, uh, more and more online monitoring systems are now in place. So these are some of the new things which are which are already already in practice in India, and uh, uh, some of the experts in uh, uh, during this two days uh, tutorials uh, will throw more light on this. I wish this. Uh, uh, effort uh, a great success and I must compliment also once again uh, Sigre India for taking uh, so uh, 
so good uh, you know efforts in arranging such kind of uh, tutorials during this period where you know physical meetings uh, are 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 little impossible uh, because you know there are in, in in certain part of parts of the country there are still uh, you know uh, covid uh, cases which are on increase so, so this is this is a good way of utilizing this these these online technologies for dissemination of knowledge and great efforts by sigri india thank you so much uh, everyone for listening to me and then i would like to hand over to organizers for taking this forward please thank you so much thank you so much sir uh, for your detailed and wonderful presentation uh, so uh, before i invite our next speaker uh, mr nilesh arora ji i would like to introduce uh, mr arora to the participants mr arora is a uh, director from epsilon uh, asia group he is a member uh, of uh, sigre and uh, he uh, mr arora is a globally uh, recognized expert on the development field deployment and sanitization of rtv insulator coatings he has been integral to the introduction and ad uh, adoption for this technology across india and was selected by sigre paris uh, for the working group b2.69 that is on coatings for power networks as a full member as ceo of uh, epsilon asia group uh, that has executed over 100 rtv projects he has uh, in depth knowledge of field coating processes and best practices he has authored numerous uh, papers and lectured widely on the subject globally is a consultant and currently holds the following uh, like positions uh, like he is a member of BIS ETD 06 that is on insulate uh, insulator and insulator accessories and segre uh, b2.69 that is on coating for power networks and contributed to the IEEE 1523 2018 RTV insulator coatings global RTV R&D forum that is in italy and has authored and co-authored many technical papers and in, in india and abroad so i welcome you sir and request you to kindly start with your technical presentation now thank you i hope you can hear me yes sir thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, i am very happy to see a lot of people here uh of course cbip has always worked very hard especially uh, you know vishal dadji and patra ji have worked really hard with the secret desk i see them slog and put in every effort it is also extreme pleasure to see uh, the honorable and sigre legend uh, dr konstantin and uh, anish ji also it's pleasure to see him and well at least listen to him and uh, i must warn you before we all proceed that i i have not one but two topics to trouble you with uh, one is to do with the rtv coatings which uh, i have been involved with for quite a while and the second is to do with uh, insulator conductors uh, sorry insulated conductors which are insulated at a later stage so it's not that you're purchasing a pre insulated a conductor but a conductor which for various reasons you are insulating after the line has been uh, erected so let's start with the first one and uh, as has been told to you by the organizers you know once we have this session over please you know free feel free to ask me whatever you wish so i will uh, commence now if that is okay with everybody okay okay so let me just Okay, we're good to go. So I we could try and finish this in about fifteen to twenty minutes. I might run a little over. Uh, there are I've tried to use 
a lot of uh, you know photographs in some of the later slides because you know photos tell a lot of stories, make it a lot easier to understand. And uh, I do not know the profile of a lot of people who are uh, in the audience. So, you know, I have to assume that there are some people who don't know much about RTP coating. And on the other hand, there are absolute experts like, you know, our cigarette legend and Anisha Anandji and everyone else as well. So acronyms which we will use, I will not go through the entire thing. RTV, for anyone who does not know, it's room temperature vulcanizing. Essentially, it, this is a liquid rubber which turns which vulcanizes or turns into rubber at room temperature without any heat or any cooling. It just uses moisture from the air. And then HVIC is a high voltage insulator coating. I will, these are the two phrases you will hear the most. And uh, the rest are things which you will probably be familiar with in any case. How does it work? Essentially, you have the mechanical strength of one of these large or discs or any of these uh, porcelain insulators. You use liquid rubber RTV coating and being a liquid it takes the shape of the substrate whatever the whatever the insulator may be a CT or a PT or a surge arrestor or a cap and pin insulator and you essentially polymerize or rubberize the surface and give it the surface properties of what is called an HTM or hydrophobicity transfer material much like your polymer insulators and uh, as the end product you have a combination between the surface which you require, which is hydrophobic. These drops of water here will give you this uh, idea uh, of how hydrophobic it is. And the, of course, the mechanical strength underneath is of the uh, ceramic or uh, porcelain or glass as you we look at it here. Uh, I will not get into this in much detail. Just the idea of this is to show that, you know, this is from the 70s and 80s. Uh, this particular RTV coating uh, idea had started. So, you know, Although I can say that uh, the evolution has been there, uh, you know, it, it has had enough to uh, fine tune, but yet certainly there's a lot more room for material science and a lot of research to go in and, you know, over the next 50 years come up with something even better. But for now, we know that this is reasonably a refined technology used very often, wide, widely across the world. And, uh, you know, there is evidence of this uh, by the very fact that uh, standardization efforts have followed, which we will come to in a later uh, uh, slide. In India, it is at least 13 years, you know, where these coatings have been used. I have to say, largely, this is in substation. Uh, remarkably, this has, there has been a 100% failure of your, uh, performance, but nothing is 100%, I would say near 100%. Uh, independent uh, power producers were the first adopters. Private transmission distribution started, power grid has followed. Uh, despite this, due to the low awareness, low understanding, uh, and you know, uh, the state electricity boards have not really actually adopted this uh, technology as much as they could have, especially considering the peninsular shape of this country and you know, everyone knows what kind of pollution we're uh, dealing with here. Uh, the coatings are now also in India. There is the Bureau of Indian Standards. We have recently, on the 11th of uh, November last year, we have now officially declared this as you know uh, uh, IS 11310. There is now a Indian uh, guideline based on uh, IEEE 1523. We start with this case study, and why this particular case study is Tata Power is very well known for his uh, you know its quality. Uh, the location is absolutely miserable. I would say really utterly one of the most polluted locations anyone can find anywhere on earth. So you have excellent engineering standards. You know, you're using 35 and 30, uh, 33 and 35 uh, kV per mm design, uh, mm, sorry, it should be mm per kV uh, design trippage. Um, despite this, there was a lot of problem chattering, pollution flasher was started, uh, at a, really in year in, in year one, huh? so there was chattering and flashovers. There were about thirty nine flashovers in the first year. Washing was tried, grease was tried. Uh, you know they tried weather monitoring. They tried growing trees and shrubs around the substation. Uh, you know to try and uh, control loose dust. Nothing worked. We applied a coating there in two thousand twelve, and on last assessment, which was as recently as maybe two weeks ago, uh, it was observed that in nine years everything has been working perfectly and this that's why you know this is a test study which you're using this is the location and mind you this is not an ordinary desert this is a salt desert and the difference is a normal desert you have 
sand and this is basically silica which you know I, on its own acts as a uh, you know when the wind blows it acts as a uh, you know sand blasting effect but when it is salt a salt desert then not only do you have uh, sea breezes which are conductive coming from the water side arabian sea in this case uh, you also or the gulf of gutch you also have the uh, saline effect of the Uh, sand, or you know, the salt desert of the uh, salty sand, which comes and sits on the uh, insulator, and this is a condition which is here. Yeah, you know, there's a Köppen classification. The Köppen classification is how the entire world divided in terms of you know similar uh, you know climate, uh, and this is where you find this. You know, Perth, Western Australia, uh, you know, the uh, Mina region largely, the Kalahari parts of North America. This is really, really, really terrible area. and the other thing is why this is important here is this particular graph is precipitation for 7 or 8 months in a year there is no natural washing so you know you have insulated deposit you have pollutant deposits which is build and build and build and here is an example of this as opposed to 24 disks in a string this this uh, tata power decided to use 31 huh? and despite that if you see the if you see how dirty this is an insulator string which was brought down this is the level of pollution and you can see these are scratch marks which are made with a screwdriver if you please if someone trying to clean off the you know the the pollutant and try and put back up of course this is not a very very clever idea uh, this is this is flash over uh, you know uh, uh, on the particular uh, you know on some items this is evidence of flash overs all this equipment by the way has been recoated and is in use it is found to be good after this coating was done on a bay by bay basis what happened was what we had was we had a situation where flash overs had commenced in year 1 like i said greasing washing didn't work 365 days of live line washing every single day someone was there in the switchyard cleaning the uh, insulators and yet there were seven there were flash overs every 7 to 10 days mind you this is startup power they did not Uh, compromise on any of the equipment so you know going by the advice of dr constantine they did, did not cut corners here i have to say uh, this is very this is not usual in india but they did not cut corners they really went for the best and still you know uh, this is what happened and after the uh, application of coating the washing instances again this was checked now february march 28th and feb in first batch uh, washing instances was zero the flash overs was zero special monitoring nothing and no maintenance required so for 9 years i would really believe that this is you know should be qualified as a success and this evidence is evidence further by a paper which has been uh, authored by tata power which of course you are more than welcome i can you know send it to anybody who is interested now we come back to the for coating this here is a global trend of you know where we see the uh, industry growing of course this is a fraction in terms of value of the uh, total market of uh, you know polymer insulators and ceramic and glass because of the value of the items are much smaller but uh, where we see it this is a logarithmic graph so a, a graph so we are you know operating in uh, scales of uh, to the power of 10 we have here if you see from 2010 to 2030 there is a uh, 10x uh, increase so you know from 2010 to 20 10x and now we see wherever we are we see a 10x rise over the next uh, 10 years 9 years uh, where are we with standardization I have to say that uh, through the efforts of you know uh, our friends and you know Dr. Constantine and his colleagues in uh, Paris, uh, working there, Sigre has really taken the lead in really coming up with, I would say, a RTV coating encyclopedia. It will be the most comprehensive work on RTV coatings ever to be published on this planet. A lot of effort has gone in there. Uh, I am very lucky to be a part of that work group, and there are. Ex- really really luminary there you know top people from all over the world which i am lucky to uh, interact with you know while we we are drafting this uh, particular uh, uh, technical brochure uh, ieee 1523 came up with you know uh, for many many years ago they in 2002 i think they had you know the first elementary very very elementary and basic uh, guideline 2018 it was re, you know it was republished uh, and a uh, lot of improvements were made but i really believe that you know our tb from sigre should be should take that really a few steps further bureau of indian standards like i said already this is already now uh, i uh, is 11310 already part of this and iec they also you know have also sat up and taken note of what is going on in our b269 work group and there is also talk that you know this uh, iec might look at and uh, use whatever we we uh, create in that b269 what are the trends we are looking at here 
so there is, has been excellent performance of the RTV coatings globally in all kinds of stations for decades. Transmission lines in you know, Terra, Italy, in France, you know, all across the MENAs and now coastal America have been pushing growth of the uh, coating. Uh, 10x growth, like I said, which is going there. A big change, what we see is that the RTV coatings, you know, till about six, seven years ago, even in India, was only looked at as a maintenance tool to, you know, for firefighting and as an operational expense, OPEX. Uh, you know, where you say, okay, okay, you know, nothing else is working, apply the coating and, you know, let's take it from there. Now, we see a lot of new transmission lines. We saw new substations where, you know, prior to the... Uh, prior to the erection of, of, of the particular site, the coating is done. So, you know, it's being considered at a design phase. The cost is capitalized. So, you know, the owner is happy. Uh, the, uh, you know, we are happier as RTV coating people because, you know, we work with cleaner insulators. We work with, uh, uh, you know, sites which are uh, cleaner. We don't have to wait for shutdown. So, you know, you don't hurry up your work. So it's a much better idea. And coatings now are a viable option, you know, at the design stage itself. So, you know, you, like I said, you don't need to wait for, you know, two years and problems, then start you know, using this as an as emergency uh, uh, method. The, again, there's unfortunately no IEC standard, no, uh, you know, IEEE I, 1523 is there. Sigre now is taking the lead. Uh, and uh, the other part is that bottom-only coated insulators are showing great promise. You know, this will later come up. In that uh, cigarette TV, I should not say more. We have to wait for that to be published. But the bottom only coated insulators. When I mean bottom, I mean the pin side. So it's just the pin side, and we see most of the creepage is on the pin side of the uh, insulator. It, this is a terrific, terrific, uh, uh, you know, idea because you save on packaging costs, you save on maintenance abilities, and uh, you know, performance is nearly as good as uh, as a fully coated uh, insulator. Uh, different countries have different specs. We see that most of the specifications, uh, you know, have been adopted or adapted from the silicone rubber insulators. Not, of the, not very many of them are truly relevant to uh, RTV coatings, I have to say. The uh, 62217 1000-hour test has been adapted to food coatings. Uh, 60507, which is, a, you know, uh, and uh, the other pollution tests, really technically are not strict, are strictly not meant for HTM, that's high, high uh, hydrophobicity transfer material insulators. But, you know, given a lack of any other standardization abilities for coating for many, many years, this is what has been used in many countries. Tracking and erosion has been, uh, has been uh, modified. People are now looking at, you know, 2,000-hour multi-stress test. This is gaining traction. I think uh, Dr. Pigini was uh, one someone who worked on this a lot. Uh, different countries, you know, there's a lot of confusion. Who uses what? This is, uh, you know, this is a, a, a really a challenge for insulator manufacturers because, you know, especially in the export market, you know, they don't know if you're selling, a, you know, to country A, they have different rules. Country B has different tests. Country C is something else. So this is uh, a challenge which they need to come around. This, I will not go into too much detail here, but the idea of this is, uh, this is a paper which was, uh, has, uh, you know, Dr. Uh, Edward Cherney, who has played a lead role in RTV coatings by many. He has been, including Terna, calls him the father of uh, modern RTV coatings. So Dr. Cherney assisted me with this work here, and you know, he worked also largely with a gentleman from Istanbul University. Um, where what they did here was they, we looked at the different fillers, you know, the ATH filler, the quartz fillers, uh, fully coated insulators, bottom-only coated insulators, and then saw how they perform in the 1,000-hour test uh, when in vertically aligned, like a suspension uh, insulator, and then horizontally aligned. So that's essentially what this test is. And what we're looking at is, you know, we know that, you know, looking at the, uh, that the leakage current causes dry band arcing, which causes hydrophobicity loss, which basically essentially is aging and pushing the coating to the end of life, to, to end of life. So this leakage current is a bad idea. It's, it's, it's the enemy of uh, the uh, coating, uh, of silicones, actually, especially coating in this context. So... All kinds of coating, you know, quartz fillers, ATH fillers, you know, in the uh, suspension, vertical orientation, there has been almost no difference in performance. Everything works really beautifully, you know, all is well. But suddenly, when you take this same uh, insulator and you put it into tension orientation in this 1,000-hour salt fog chamber, what you see is this uh, quartz filler, what we see in S2 here, if you see the bottom of the graph, the black line, this is near dead. 
still well past 600 hours. So for 640 hours, this there is no leakage current. Whereas on the ATH field, uh, uh, ATH field uh, coating, the leakage current commences within under 50 hours. So this extra leakage current is really a bad thing. And if, so if you are, or anyone is ever considering using a coating on a tension insulator, this is a key parameter to look at because you do not want your leakage current to start really, really quickly within two days of you know, onset. So this is a good, this is a good uh, test here. So to give you an idea to you know how the uh, ability of a uh, coating in a tension orientation can uh, you know can uh, delay the onset of leakage current, we look at this graph. It is a bigger number is better here. For a fully coated insulator, it is eight times longer than a uh, ATH filled one, and for a, just a bottom only coated, it is three and a half times longer. It is still a very very good very very large number. In India, I have to say, testing has been done. Uh, there was, you know, uh, the IEC 60507 is still the most important test in India here. Um, our friend here, uh, the, our, I saw Sanjeev Ji here from uh, Aditya Bidla Insulators. He has, you know, been uh, really, really instrumental in trying to push how different, you know, this technology should be used. And under his guidance, you know, we did some testing at, you know, bottom-only coated insulators, fully coated uh, insulators, at 300 microns, at you know 500 microns, and amazingly, we saw that you know even the uh, just the undercoated insulators, just uh, coated at 300 microns, and you know we hit this uh, figure of 224 kg per cubic meter saline density. Everything worked very well with the salt form. Addition was perfect in the end of it. The finish was perfect. So you know, over all in all, and we managed doing this actually where the coating was in such a way that it did not need to modify the packaging of the insulator after it is done which is a remarkable thing considering packaging is a major, major issue for coated uh, insulators. Based on this, you know, there has been, as I understand, a previous recommendation from the uh, CEA to the Ministry of Power. And, you know, they said there is, there is no single perfect insulator for all environments. There is some places, uh, uh, SRI is way better, incomparably better than a polymer in some cases, sorry, than a, a coated insulator. In some cases, you know, I would say a coated insulator might be considered um, in some areas, you know, you might be something else. I don't, which I, I don't even know. And uh, the reason this was recommended was, you know, that uh, to eliminate, you know, any chance of line drops. Quality in India of uh, polymer insulators is an issue, which I have to say that uh, this may not be an issue everywhere in the world, but in India, the quality of polymer insulators, as we see, as we are reported, is certainly, certainly uh, uh, is not grade A. And as I understand that, uh, you know, we have a lot more failures here than, you know, other parts of the world, as I understand. I could be totally wrong. This is information which I have received. And let me be clear, it is not qualified. It is just through, you know, discussions. No one has ever come up with clear data about this. I have to be very honest with this. So this, I'll come later here. So for insulator OEMs, you know, what are we looking at? The Coating, RTV coating is a function of creepage, not of voltage. It is therefore, it is used for all AC and DC insulator types, all creepage. So whether you have a TT manufacturer or you are a, a long rod uh, uh, long rod insulator maker or you make wave traps or whatever you make, it doesn't make a difference. Whatever the creepage is, this works. It works here. Insulator OEMs also should know that, you know, you can use machine sprays, dip coating, automatic uh, spray machines with, you know, uh, PLC driven for high volume. Many, many companies like Terna and all utility, utilities only want to purchase uh, the uh, uh, machine coated insulators. Mo please consider modified packaging as an additional cost. You don't want this to hit you once you, you know, make some quotations for your customers. Uh, coating and customer sites within India or you know, wherever you are is also viable. It sometimes can help you with uh, you know, handling and packaging problems. And I also ask you as uh, OEMs, if there are any, please start you know, gearing up for testing your insulators partially or fully for, on your key models for scalability and also to retain old packaging, see if it works, and gear up for uh, exports. Coating is also, I have to tell you, are used for air core reactors. Air core reactors, you'd be surprised how many, you know, uh, problems can be formed on, uh, on air core reactors because of the lack of coating or, um, you know, just blindly done without people who are, you know, well qualified to do the job. Air core reactor surfaces can range from everything from, you know, metals to fiber to fiberglass to 
even uh, new plastics like abs you know where the coating ordinary rtv coating cannot fit uh, you know will not work on it, it does not uh, even uh, fix plus you cannot coat everything you cannot use the same thickness and same rules for coating insulators on uh, uh, echo reactors this has been done in india i understand very often and it please note it is really serious because you can hamper the uh, air flow you can hamper the uh, heat dissipation which will you know reduce the cost of your uh, Uh, sorry the the efficiency of your equipment and really you pay for what you get you pay for you know unqualified people and it will really cost you millions over the next few years all purchasers please look for draft specifications that ensure quality but do not hamper project process you know or come up with small minor uh, uh, inconsequential uh, steps to slow work down and increase your shutdown time consider supplier reputations at least 10 years you know in in problem areas problem environment should be considered because even let's say video uh, coatings could perform well for the first 2 3 years i will always say this a bad coating applied well will outperform good coating applied badly so please look at the contractor skills don't go give this job to anyone who's coating you the lowest price and uh, purchase by insulator boqs do not you know just say i want 500 kg of insulators that is not a good thing coating sold in price sensitive markets are very very often optimized for tenders where they have higher silico uh, solvent low silicon and you know if you see the solvent uh, specific gravity is just 0.7 so therefore you know if you just take a 5 or 18 let's say 19 liter drum with the high solvent it is 21 kg and the same drum using a uh, high silicon low solvent is 24 kg so you know you can totally understand that there is a big difference in the material what you're purchasing and you think you're buying cheaper but you're not buying cheaper actually because the coating coverage starts getting hampered because you know solvent evaporates you're not left with anything after that evaporates key issue coating life pure silicone is you know certainly uv resistant but you know you can't use pure silicone you need to use fillers you need uh, you know to give it you know a part certain kind of other uh, 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 properties to a particular uh, coating or silicone material so therefore you have to start uh, looking at what is the effect of sunlight and uv on a silicone material as you use it the oldest coatings i had coated usa has been 25 years again this is in uh, in the pacific uh, pg and uh, e i am not well aware whether this is still in use but i know that this was there till about 4 or 5 years ago i do not know honestly if it is still there in india we are well past the 30 year mark for when the oldest coating is there without any maintenance i must add there is no universal rule but you know we are looking at 25 years for coating life being very realistic why i say there is no universal rule because many times uh, uh, some utilities and also oem put on put use the rtv coating on insulator shed or insulator geometry which is a for the design be under specif- under specified for a particular environment so you know where you need creepage let's say 31 and you be 25 or even less then you know electrical stresses are certain to cause damage on the coating or then you have some areas where you know wetting is constant very problematic you have some areas where uh, the uh, there is abrasion for some reason i don't know why you know when people you know going up and down or you know being very careless it can make a difference but the good thing is that you know in with the rtv coating if the silicone material fails so even if you do not have any uh, trust that the silicone material will last 25 years you can understand that even if the silicone is gets damaged there will not be a catastrophic line drop or a problem with a porcelain uh, uh, insulator because under the damaged silicone a good ceramic insulator lies underneath and you have adequate time for recoat generally no maintenance is required for coating and live line maintenance for coated insulators is also possible especially if you know when you have only bottom only coated insulators this is very good for some you know markets like india and you know maybe lots of Afri- parts of africa and south america this is very very important people climb up and down insulators you know they're very adept at doing this but it just does you know graze insulators some photos this is where we started in 2006 and you know someone came to me and said rtv and i thought rtv was an acronym for radio and television i did not know what it was honestly but then slowly we looked at it we you know as uh, epsilon we did a project for buyer the german company and we set up a polyurethane and silicone uh, you know work uh, factory for them as an epc factory and that is the first time i had ever actually got used to familiarize with the end process of, of you know polyurethanes and then you know silicone from there so this is here is you know the first steps i was out in the field with my camera taking photos in punjab and villages here there and the other 
we use you know our first uh, trial application were all on plasto insulators and you know I'm surprised that people gave them to us in hindsight but they worked really well uh, uh dr constantine kiran z das leben uh, <laughs> it says that the uh, it says that the trains will not uh, will not uh, you know get delayed or you know will not have a problem the coating is going to uh, you know work magic this was from a newspaper article in 2010 where we coated about 4500 or 5000 uh, insulators uh, for uh, the indian railways there are some photos working here on the left if i'm not wrong is ntpc on the right is you know uh, wind wind farm 220 kv this is a steel plant as you can see the pollution levels are something uh this video may play may not play i could try it it may not play but this is the us this is the video uh, here can you see it yeah this is a uv camera Yeah, you see, basically, that that there is nothing, there is nothing here. There is no corona except for on the conductor. That's essentially what it is. Here is cement in a captive power uh, plant. You can see there is five mm of pollutant layer, which is a major issue for hydrophobicity to transfer. But you can see here the you know they're the cleaning the uh, layers of limestone related mud of the uh, insulator before the coating. Even here, it has been used for many many years. No uh, failure. This is typically what a team of coating looks like. in india here yeah, this is power grid in dajubaka people working up you know uh, trying to get about 100 uh, post insulators in a bus coated within 6 hours or 7 hours because shutdowns are really really difficult to come by for you know uh, uh, organization like power grid where every line is so critical um, transformer bushings work being done here this is bina 1200 kv as dr kostatin also uh, referred to so this is equipment here which we have tried also with rtv coating just to see what it is uh, this is here uh, on uh, women's uh, hvdc um, air core reactors it is used this is here used on 765 kb bushings all across again power grid about say 40 odd locations what we found here between the coated uncoated bushing and the coated bushing is that you know there was approximately a 4% flash over uh, per two year period whereas after the uh, coating you know this this uh, you know for gen 4 coating this came down to 0% over five year period so i would say generally are highly is very successful here thank you very very much all of you and again my thanks to uh, you know dr constantine the entire cbi team and of course uh, to uh, aditya billa insulators who i have seen very kindly has you know been sponsors for this and most importantly everyone who has taken some time off you know to try and attend this so this has been my first presentation i do not know if we have time for the second one but uh, i leave it to the organizers uh, organizers to tell me how to proceed if so yeah am i audible still hello Neil, it's good presentation. You are audible. Yes, I can. Yeah, good Nilesh. morning, doctor. Yeah, Nilesh. What I can suggest is, I don't know uh, uh, what's the opinion of uh, Sigra India on your request for uh, for extra time for this another presentation. It could also be possible if if you're not able to give it today, to you, uh, because this this is a two days tutorial. You can uh, right for tomorrow. Uh, Absolutely. Firstly, I think it would it would be better that we take up question answers on your this presentation uh, uh, from the from the audience, and then uh, let's see uh, if if we are still you know under four thirty, we can proceed. Otherwise, maybe tomorrow you can try that. That, that would be uh, better. Absolutely, I'm very happy to do this tomorrow. I think it's better also. I even tomorrow also it will you know even though it's 15 minutes, I think tomorrow will be a better idea if someone can carve out 10 minutes for 15 minutes for me tomorrow. 
because I believe there will be some I, questions I, I, as well. I, I, I leave it to Mr. Dimkar and uh, Sigra and right. CBI to decide on this, please. As, as do I, of course. Uh, if all the speakers allow, uh, we will take queries uh, to the in tomorrow. I think the queries were today regarding this particular presentation and the second presentation regarding the insulation sleeve for conductors. That is what we can do tomorrow for 10 minutes as suggested by. OK, Anita. OK, OK, sure. sure. That is, so uh, what uh, I understood correctly. Yes, 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 exactly. So uh, oh, I request all the participants uh, mm -hmm. to raise their queries if they have to all the speakers. Any query? Okay. I must have covered everything if no one. <laughs> okay, I think oh. Sanjay, Sanjay. If not queries, I may have, uh, this is a constant in Baba Ilio as an addition. First of all, uh, Nilis, congratulations. Excellent presentation. I am very happy that you have joined SIGRE because we need young people like you active and uh, to bring us forward. You know, people like me are dying out. So we need some uh, some future in SIGRE. So this is, and oh. I'm happy that this working group is doing such a great work. And regarding your comment that I see is uh, using uh, is go, probably is going to use your work. This is standard procedure, actually. Many, many IC <laughs> standards. Yes, many IC standards. We have a very good cooperation with IC. All the standards on compost insulators I have worked on since many, many years have been taking this as work, secret work, secret does the ground work, and then IC takes it over, goes through the standardization procedure, which is somehow tedious and more formalistic, and makes a standard. So this is uh, this is exactly how we how we are uh, we are working. Now, if I have the chance, I would like to make a comment. Which I, I there was a question yesterday. <clears throat> I think on reliability of the various insulators and also coatings. You cover coatings uh, very well, but regarding insulators, I can tell you we have done quite a few secret surveys. The recent one is was uh, finished lately. And we have found out that all insulators, whatever material, and also coatings, if, as was mentioned also by by Niles, the quality is good, the, the 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 failure figures are very similar, extremely low. So all products one day will fail, and they are they are like human beings. So we are not there forever, but. The failure rate is extremely low. <clears throat> There's no difference between Bosline, glass, silicon, or coatings, in my personal view, if they are from renowned suppliers and well applied. Right. So all these bag of stores you hear from one or the other supplier, whatever, I mean, from the silicon suppliers about the, comp the problem of, of porcelain or vice versa, I have heard all these stories all my life. You can actually forget because as I mentioned, the market has proven. We have also seen by Niles that the coatings are growing and the coatings will not grow if they are not good. So market has decided that all these products, if they are of high quality, they are good enough for the grid. So it is actually the onus is to take the right product. This is this is the issue. There's no difference between the products regarding material, but it's only between quality. That is a statement I would like to, to share because I hear still today uh, that this is better, it's not better. There's nothing like the best insulator. There's nothing like the best uh, toothpaste or the best car. It's only the best wife we have. That's the only thing. All the other things <laughs> are, are relative. Nilas, you are, you are smiling. I hope Breka is not listening here. Eh? It's <laughs> <awesome. laughs> so this, you know, all, all insulators and coatings are good if you choose the right one. That's my statement. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Constantine. I think I, uh, we have uh, some questions from ML Sachdeva ji uh, in the chat box. 
and Mr. Sanjay Upadhyay as well, I see. So Nilesh, you can, you, if you're able to see those questions, you can take up and answer that. Right, so I can see a hand raised from Sanjay Upadhyay ji. So if you know, he can, uh, more than welcome to put your question forward, please. You'll have to unmute your uh, mic, Sanjay ji. I see his hand up, but I don't see, uh, I don't hear the question. But needless, there's a question in the chat. Ah, is yeah. this... Okay, I see it here. Okay, so is this suiting? Okay, one minute. So uh, porcelain and glass insulator manufacturers have started supplying insulator coatings with RV coating, RTV coating, I assume. Yes, uh, yes, of course, I have started supplying insulators. That is correct. And uh, this is in many parts of the world. Yes, you are right. Uh, this is started. Um, acceptance of this is where we see that uh, the numbers which I was referring to with a with a 10x growth is basically driven by transmission line. Um, insulators. So cap and pin is where we see the ma most amount of growth. And your second question regarding is the coating uh, suitable for conductors to improve jumper clearance? No. In fact, this is really not something to uh, even consider. I have tomorrow's presentation, which is now today's presentation, which will go to tomorrow, has a whole slide on this particularly for two reasons. Uh, one is when you apply an RTV coating to the uh, braided conductor, the conductor actually absorbs the coating, which is not good for the amp to the current ca uh, carrying capacity. It causes you know unwinding of the uh, particular braids, individual braids, and also uh, during galloping. Uh, and and uh, the second part is the coating when applied on the conductor is only a tiny of a very very minuscule thickness. You know we are talking in terms of one third of a millimeter or half a millimeter and no significant dielectric strength is imparted with a conductor thick, uh, with a uh, of, uh, dielectric of that thickness on a, on a high voltage line and the third reason is that an rtv coating on metal like this will very very quickly almost near immediately will scratch even when one bird sits on it so certainly i would not say that this is a good idea for this uh, you know there is a research being done by two germans called uh, Marx and Rosa, which is being covered in my next presentation, which for tomorrow I request if you can attend that as well, where they use something called the barrier effect in dielectrics. And this, for this to be, uh, for this to work for conductor clearance, the dielectric capabilities of the particular uh, medium have to be of a certain level. So it's not that this uh, RTV coating will work there. I hope this is, uh, you know, put some uh, clarity to uh, your. Uh, question for the answer for it. Okay, I see next one. May, may less, sorry, maybe I want to add a comment on this because we had this issue about the jumpers on in right. Switzerland. In 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 order to minimize uh, size of towers, jumpers are play a role eh, because they are they, you need right. a certain distance to the earth uh, tower, and the solution we have uh, the a utility has chosen. Actually, they took a small piece. Of a full insulated cable, it's 150 kV cable, and the the, the supplier made with two two ceiling ends, and then the, the apply, they applied this as the jumper to 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 ensure current continuity. So and then they could reduce the clearance enormously because it is full insulated. So you you save all the all the sag, you save all the all the sag of the of, of the jumper. This is saved, and you reduce. Uh, and you reduce uh, your tower. So if you have a jumper, it is it sags. And then you put a cable instead. You can make it straight. So you save all this distance, all this sag to the next uh, crosser. Right. So that's really useful. Here, yeah, what we have found actually in now we don't even know the full science behind it. To be really honest, but the presentation for my next presentation was to do with the uh, barrier effect in dielectrics of how we can use a 66 kV conducted cable. A 66 kV rated uh, insulation material applied in situ on the conductor, even at a jumper, 
And with this, even in a 400 kV uh, uh, conductor, we have found that the failure rates, which were there due to uh, you know uh, the conductor blowing in the breeze or you know due to third party uh, trees or any other uh, uh, illegal structures coming in within that uh, clearance required clearance, it used to have a problem. So we tried this at Power Grid, and in 2000, and I would say 16 or 17, there was one situation where uh, in Western India, instead of the 5.49 meters of clearance which we, was required, we only had 1.8 meters clearance, and it worked. Now, if this was only one case, I would not come and tell you that you know this is a technology which is working. But this has now been done in 61 locations where a 66 kV sleeve uh, and tape on that is being used to cut down uh, or reduce the risk of um, uh, reduce the risk of conductor clearance infringement. And part of the science is known, but part of the science is completely not known. And I cannot even tell you, cannot even claim to tell you why this is happening. But I know that this is happening. We know this is happening. I have you know, checked with a lot of people, including Dr. Cherney and, you know, various other people. And from looking at different uh, permutations and combinations of the sleeve, of the, uh, of the permittiv permittivity of the sleeve, or to the tape, you know, to inhomogeneous uh, different kinds of uh, uh, dielectric uh, you know, strength, how it is working. So this is really something which... Uh, is very innovative, but the science behind it is still not fully known. Niles, this is a, go a good subject for a new secret working group. You should propose that. The <laughs> Indian okay. National Committee should propose that, and you as a convener. Right. This will be a nice, a nice job for you. That is very, very kind of you, and you're certainly elevating me to a level which I do not deserve to be. <laughs> So the next here, I see this here, abrasion damage to coating is an issue for installation. Yes, how do you minimize this? So, well, two parts. In some, case, in some cases, it is not possible to send a, uh, you know, a coated insulator uh, to the site because you know, if it is being erected during handling, it will scratch. This really has near zero effect on the performance of the coated insulator. But if you're a utility and you're buying a coating, you know, you tend to be you know, very finicky about not wanting scratches and not wanting any cuts. So the best way ideally to do it is install a large uh, insulator, a CT or a PT, and then do the coating. Uh, if you're talking about transmission line insulators, uh, just coat the bottom only, uh, uh, you know, pin side only. And I would say 90% of your scratches will really go due to abrasion. It will not be a it will not be a problem. We can, well, like I said, you know, please contact ABI how they've done it. We can also help you, uh, just you know, to make sure that the coating is done only to a certain uh, part of the insulator and the scratching is completely gone. Uh, I have this here. It says live. Uh, elaborate more on the live line maintenance of a coated insulator. So the idea is if you have a coated insulator, which is only bottom only coated on a transmission line, I presume you're talking about a transmission line, there is no change in how you perform because uh, you know, you're know you not really going to damage the uh, coating because the coating is only on the underside of the uh, uh, insulator. If you're talking about somewhere in the uh, switchyard, try and make sure a lot of these you know coatings are now pretty resilient in terms of, you know, they will not damage when you climb on them. But you know, try and you know not climb on them. Use a uh, band lift to access what you need to access. You will not have a problem. Again, minor cuts, nicks will not have a problem. A peel, a peeling insulator is a problem because there you are now dealing with uh, poor adhesion. But if it is a nick or a cut, no problem. Uh, the coating may not stand due to interest and friction. Yeah, right, correct. So this is I would not say that uh, uh, you know on, on a braided conductor to use this. What should be the minimum coating thickness? What is the impact of low thickness, high thickness on coating? Now, this is a very unique question and a very, very pertinent question and a question to which really a lot of people do not believe the answer. But the real truth of the matter is any coating between 200 micron to 6, 700 micron has really no bearing on the performance of this coating. Many people will try and sell you their technologies to say, you know, mine is better, mine is, you know, this year, mine is more accurate. We have got live data again as recently as you know uh, last month from Tata, you know CGPL, where there was a 30% variation in thickness on one part to the other, and there is no uh, change uh, in the performance of the coating over the last nine years. I I two three very clearly says that you know coating between 125 microns and 700 microns is working really almost as well in the field, and 
The other thing is, if you specify too narrow a band for this coating and start rejecting material which is which is 580 microns coated and you know rejecting material which is 490 micron coated, you are not really doing yourself as a favor as a utility. You are just increasing costs and making your own life more difficult. Whereas if you really keep that band sensible uh, of you know what is permissible coating, you'll be better off. And there is also new research now which is done which shows that you know when you have a higher coating thickness, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 mm, that's 700, 800, 900 microns, you will actually create more hot spots, hamper heat dissipation, and really damage the uh, coating faster than uh, what was originally envisaged. Too low coating is a problem when you are using it in a desert environment where you are worried about the abrasion by the wind causing uh, you know, what I would say is sand blasting effect. So that is, uh, that is there. Um, Anything else here? Uh, insulated conductor, but not equivalent to cable, have been used in the. Uh, yeah, certainly, sir, you are right. Uh, this is okay. Here, next one here. What do I see here? Minimum thickness, insulated conductor. That's fine. Two insulated. Yeah, correct. Yes, sir. Of course, that is uh, Dr. Constantine's. Uh, two. It's a proven method. Interesting questions. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, for the question. So thank you so much, sir, for answering all the questions. So I think uh, we can close uh, this question and answer session. And the rest of the questions uh, can be answered tomorrow, the day right. two of this national tutorial. Uh, so uh, with this, uh, we close this uh, session for day one of this tutorial. And I would like to thank uh, all the speakers and the participants who have joined us uh, for the day one, uh, especially uh, Dr. Constantine, Mr. Anish Ananji, Mr. Nilesh Arora ji, and the, all the participants, uh, ML Sachdeva Sarji, uh, for joining us and supporting to organize such a tutorial. So uh, we, uh, we will uh, meet tomorrow at uh, 3 p.m. for the day two. I request all of you to uh, be on time. Like we will start like uh, three o'clock. So with this, uh, we thank you. Thank you very, very, very much. Nice to see all of you. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, have a nice day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you Dr. tomorrow. Constantin. Yeah. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. I'll wait a minute. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bye bye. See you. And give, give regards. By our best regards. Best regards to you. Bye bye.